afternoon, everybody. I hope you can hear my, um, my voice. Yes, okay. It's a real pleasure to start today another APA in conversation with. We have already made some editions of this one and on the topic of CAF is the third one we are celebrating. And the reason why we convened this event to talk about quality in public administration, quality tools, quality models in public administration, is because we have been for more than 20 years at APA, hosting the European CAF Resource Center. I will explain briefly in a minute. And we think there are a lot of things we should be talking about, discussing about with you, the interested people in, in quality, the users of quality models, with the leaders of other quality tools, like of course EFQM. So we are very pleased to have convey this group of participants, also with CAF users from Italy and from Spain, that can give us some feedback of what is the present situation, what are the challenges we are facing in the new post-pandemic era. So we have prepared this conversation around these topics, the different models, of quality in the public sector, the importance of quality tools in the public sector, also to see what is the situation from the perspective of the users, what are the experiences, the challenges, the problems, and the way ahead, what is going to be the future. So I see that we have now uh, 83 participants joining us. I think it's a good moment to start, and I will be doing so with sharing a small uh, presentation I have prepared a few words because the idea, of course, is that we, um, we make a discussion out of this. So we will have a full hour to, to talk. We will be making a brief presentation, each one of, of us, the participants in the conversation. We will open up the debate. And for you, please, you have the channel Q&A where you can bring up the questions for the uh, panelists and we will be following your requests. So we will try to make it as interactive as possible. Before I start, I would like to introduce um, you, my, my co-workers um, in this session of one hour. We have with us uh, Yosune Aguirre. She is the Global Head of Recognition of, at EFQM. And she has been working for quite some years in, at EFQM, so holding a lot of experience on this model. And she will bring up uh, to us what is the state of affairs with the new EFQM 2020. So thank you so much, Yosune, for being with us. You can complement your introduction with your uh, background lines when your turn comes. The thank same you. for uh, Begoña Lázaro Álvarez. She is the CAF national correspondent in Spain. Um, the CAF network is composed of uh, almost all the member states in the European Union, and they have named the CAF national correspondent the person in charge of representing the country and being the contact point in the country for CAF. So this is the role of Begoña in Spain, and she will also illustrate what is the situation of the use of quality models in the public sector in Spain. So thank you so much, Begoña, for being with us. We are still waiting for our um, fourth panelist, Bruno Tribioli. Uh, Bruno is uh, head of human resources in the European, oh, sorry, in the Italian Space Agency. And he has had, as a user, experience with both EFQM and CAF. So we really hope uh, that uh, the technical problems that are prevent. Oh, there he is, Bruno. I can see you now. So thank you so much and welcome. I was just making the brief introduction of the different uh, panelists. So good that you are uh, with us. Let's start then, as I said, with uh, sharing my screen and a small presentation I will make uh, for you as an introductory uh, session. So we are, um, one, one second, excuse me. Okay. We are talking about quality in the public sector. As I said, in APA, we have been hosting the European Cap Resource Center 
for more than 20 years now, 21 years. And we have been working on quality with my predecessors in the Institute, spreading the voice around Europe, especially the European member states, but also the candidate countries, on the importance of enhancing quality tools, quality models in the public sector. Nowadays, with the new commission, we have the commissioner Elisa Ferreira from Cohesion and Reforms uh, DG, that she is talking all over her different speeches in Europe about the changes we are going through after the pandemic. Public management is going to be very, diff very different in the coming years. Decision-making processes are going to be very different in the coming years, and the quality of public administration will be crucial. And in fact, different DGs at the European Commission, they are placing quality of public sector administration at the top of their agenda. And they are promoting a specific model that was constructed and built by the public sector for the public sector 20 years ago. Because what happened 20 years ago is that the public sector decided to look into the different models existing and following specifically the model of EFQM with us to, today and the Speyer Academy at that time, they constructed a working group to define a specific model for the public sector. The CAF, in fact, very much imitates the old EFQM model and provides an overall multi-perspective way of, lo of looking at public sector organizations in order to help them in a structured manner with a clear framework to establish the parameters to reach excellence, to start in a simple way the path towards excellence. And we are talking nowadays about CAF superheroes because with budgetary constraints, with public administrations being very much at the center of the public debate due to the pandemic, but also due to the present moment, painful moment of war in Europe with the uh, invasion of Ukraine, we are seeing this shift that the public sector is again at the center of the debate and at the center of the attention of the citizens. And in these difficult moments, the civil service in the different member states plays a crucial role to be able to deliver the services the citizens are expecting and demanding from us, but also building again the trust we have lost from the citizens in the public sector. So this is a very crucial moment. So at APA, we are constructing on a legacy after 20 years of hard work in spreading the voice on CAF, we are again re trying to, uh, let's say, put ourselves again in the present times, in the present challenges. We have had five different uh, CAF models, revisions. The fifth one in 2020, but it, in fact, the revision was done by different working groups and the, with the CAF national correspondence in 2019, so just before the pandemic. Is this model still valid? Do we need to revise it? The model is fully valid, is full of um, elements, flexible elements that are completely up to date to help public sector organizations to go in the path towards excellence. The purposes, the objectives of CAF is unique in the sense that it really concentrates of the, on the unique features of public sector organizations. It intends to serve as a tool for those organizations that want to start the journey towards improvement, towards uh, performance analysis, towards data collection. And it's a tool also to communicate, to act as a bridge with other models, perhaps more difficult models, more complex models, just communicate and spread the voice and also by doing benchmarking. The CAF has joined around it an uh, extensive network of CAF national correspondents, but also of CAF users. And we are trying to learn from each other by collecting the different practices of the different member states. The CAF model is quite simple. And as I say, is uh, inheriting the model of uh, EFQM in those years. We departed from nine different criteria very briefly because many of you listening to us probably know about it. But the main message is 
we are looking inside the organization. So first we have to start with our leaders. We have to convince and to bring them on board to work with us in this self-assessment process towards excellence. If we are going to evaluate organization, the leaders have to be fully committed, fully implied and involved. And then we will have our strategy and planning in which we will involve all the staff, all the members working with us, but we will also be very attentive to work with our partners inside the organization and not outside the organization. And pay attention to the processes. Don't work in silos, don't repeat activities, just be attentive to all these five criteria in order to also provide excellent results. Then outside uh, this organization, the excellence results will come by focusing on the citizen. We need to place our customer, our client, the citizen for the public sector at the center of our attention, at the center of our efforts. We will have to be looking at our results towards the people with social responsibility. So we have to keep in mind the social development um, goals. We have to keep in line with all the priorities of the different international organizations like the OECD, the European Commission. And of course, we will have to work with KPA. So we will have to be able to collect data, work with the data and quantify our results. And this will have to be done in the constant cycle of plan, do, check, and act. We have to do this constant exercise. The CAF exercise is not just one shot forever. It will be a constant work with all the partners involved in this process. And we will do this following the eight principles of excellence that have been the OECD principles, the commission principles, the principles for the public sector that we are repeating and repeating in our public organizations every day but the CAF will give us this framework to work together. As I said, we are at the right moment. It's good to look at the CAF family. We are a huge family with more than 3000 users in Europe, but we need to look at other experts in quality, other models in quality. How can we complement? How can we learn from each other? How can we join forces? Because at the end, we are all working for the excellence of our services for the citizens. So that is why I am, re I am really pleased that uh, Iosune, in representation of EFQM, has agreed to be with us. And we are ready now to see her introductory notes and to open up the floor for discussion on around these questions. What are the differences and similarities about these models? What are the status? What, where, where are we today? And what is going to be the future? So thank you so much, Iosune. Yours is the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Gracia. So I will share a couple of slides I have prepared to do a short introduction of the EFKN model. As you already mentioned, the, I mean, the CAF and the EFKN model so have been quite similar until 2019, I would say. You did the revision of the CAF model at the end of 2019, I think you said, and EFKN also launched the current model, the 2020 model in October 2019. So also, just before the pandemic, and then I like your question, like, is the model still relevant? Or, you know, is it still in line with what is happening in, in the world? So the EFKN model is now a bit different from the, from the CAF. We have changed, uh, I mean, it, we have transformed the model to say it in a way. We had several updates, as you said, you know, you had five. We also had many, many revisions in the past, but we thought it was the time to have a more in-depth review and change it. I will show it in a bit, but before I wanted to maybe highlight the five key aspects or threads of the current EFKN model. Um, one of the elements is the importance we give to the culture and purpose. You probably know, I mean, how important and how trendy those concepts are, especially the purpose is gaining more and more importance. I mean, why organizations are, I mean, differentiating from the others. So that's very visible in the current model. Uh, we used to also have a criterion called leadership, but we have gone beyond that. And we now uh, assume that excellent organizations have leaderships at all levels and must have leadership at every level. 
we believe on you know empowerment and entrepreneurship at different levels so there is no one single criteria now focusing on that it should be you know throughout the whole organization something that is also new to this model is what we call the uh, ambidextrous organizations okay so you need to manage your your daily business your yearly plans but at the same time you need to be ready you need to capture the mega trends of the future and you need to be ready to change and transform so the model focuses now a lot on this readiness flexibility which is very very i mean convenient in the VUCA environment and also with this covid i mean all the pandemic all the changes the war so this is one of the i think success of the you know of the last edition of the model because we were even if we didn't know what would what would happen we were you know encouraging organizations to get ready for changes the fourth one is the flexibility and adaptability which is linked to the previous one too we expect organizations we are in a changing environment but not only in private also in in non-for-profit and public organizations things change so much that we also need organizations organizations to have flexible structure, be able to adjust quickly and be, uh, I mean, adaptable. So that would be the fourth one. And then the fifth one, which is also related to everything that I've been mentioning is the future on the focus. So it's not only the now, but it's also, let's try to predict what might happen. I mean, we cannot know, we don't have a ball that will tell us about the future, but have the mechanism and have people ready, all your processes ready, your organization, and try to measure as much as possible what can be the trends, what can be the changes in the future. So those are, I would say, the highlights or the new elements of the, of the model. And in the next slide, you can see more the concept of the, of the new model. As you mentioned, Gracia, we, I mean, the model has always been a cause and effect relationship, and this is still the same but we have gone a bit beyond the enables and results. And we have now transformed the model to be based on three pillars, okay? It's very simple, but very powerful questions, which is why, the how, and what. And this translates to the direction of the organization. So why does your organization exist? And the purpose plays a big role here. So what is uh, what the purpose needs to fulfill? And what is the strategy? Where are you, I mean, planning to go? What is the direction you want to take? And for that, you can see that we have two criteria, okay? It's about purpose, vision, and strategy. And then uh, what I mentioned, the organizational culture and leadership, including here the culture of change, getting people ready for transformation. The second question would be the how. So this translates as the execution pillar of the model, which is how that do you intend or does your organization intend to deliver your purpose and strategy. So one thing is to plan, to set direction, but how are you going to do it? And for that, we have three criteria in the execution, which is a stakeholder engagement. Okay, uh, you have identified in your direction who are your key stakeholder groups, but how do you engage? How do you build relationships? How do you manage them? How do you create sustainable value? And this is also one of the big elements of the new model. It's not only creating value, but it's creating sustainable value. And you will see that the EFKN model is now very much in line with the UN SDGs, the circular economy, you know, all the, the mega trends of the, of the ecosystem. And then the fifth one is what I also said about you drive performance, you manage your business, but you also think of transformation opportunities, change needs you might have. And then the last one would be the what, which is translated to results. Sorry, it's missing here, but it would be the, the third pillar. And this is really measuring, okay, what is actually what you are, I mean, what you have achieved, what your organization is getting out of the direction execution and what is really what you are, uh, I mean, uh, having as a result. And also the future focus I mentioned. So one thing is your actual results, but what is what you are intending to achieve tomorrow, okay? So what will be also your future forecast? And this would be in results. In the old model, we, we were very much in line with the CAF, which was, you know, results in different blocks of stakeholders or the KPIs. This time we have built like two blocks, which is stakeholder perception. So one the, once the organization has identified their key stakeholders, we would group them in different sub-criterion parts, the different perceptions of each stakeholder group. And then the seventh criteria would be the one that is more related to the ninth criteria you mentioned, which is, strategic and operational performance. So the performance results of the organization. 
Another difference with the CAF, and I will finish with that, is uh, instead of using the PDCA cycle, the IFCM has its own assessment tool, which is radar. And in this illustration, you can see that, I mean, the, the criteria are, the, I mean, the what organization should be doing to be excellent, to be outstanding. And then the radar will tell you how well they are doing that. It measures. So I won't go in technicalities, but just for you to know that uh, the radar is the results approach, deployment, assessment, and refinement. So what is what you want to achieve? What are you going to do? How are you going to deploy it? And then how do you measure and you refine what you have done? So that's the introduction and a bit with the comparison that I wanted to, to share with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Yosune. Very clear presentation. And I think now we are ready for uh, giving the floor to Begonia. Um, because, as I said, as a, the CAF national correspondent in Spain, um, she can give us an overview. In, in Spain, there is the promotion of uh, quality, but uh, total freedom as the model to be used by the public sector organization. So it's good for uh, all of us to learn uh, how the situation looks like uh, in Spain right now. Thank you very much, Begonia. Hello, gracias. Uh, hello, uh, all of you. Can you hear me properly? Yeah? Uh, okay, um, first of all, I would like to uh, thank SAIPA to invite me for um, sharing uh, the Spanish experience with all of you. And thanks uh, also uh, for all the participants. I have seen participants from UK, from Portugal, from Poland, Bulgaria, Macedonia stay at this, uh, at this time. So thank you uh, all of you for staying there. Um, well, first of all, I would like to present um, uh, myself. I'm Beonia Lázaro, Head of Quality of the General Directorate of Public Governance of the Ministry of Finance and Civil Servants. Uh, currently, I am not a CAF user, but I was it in the past. Uh, but uh, I work every day with uh, the models, the quality models. Um, I've been the national correspondent for, uh, for CAF since 2016. Uh, and from the quality area in which we, I work, uh, we work to promote the improvement of management, the search of excellence, and fostering the innovation in public organizations. Well, we, we do all these things by encouraging the application of quality programs uh, uh, of the general framework on quality improvement in the general administrations. Uh, approved for law by law in 2005. The programs of the framework are not, not mandatory, but strongly recommended. Uh, one of the programs is uh, based in self-assessment through recognized quality models among which are CAF and EFQM. And in addition, other of the programs is the external evaluation by which we can certify the level of quality in accordance with the models. After more than 15 years of implementation of the framework, what was the balance of the implementation of quality programs in Spain? Well, uh, I can share with you a, a PDT that I have prepared uh, with some data that maybe is useful for all of you. Uh, I need Mm, it's know. good, we can see it, yes. yes. Okay, okay, perfect. So, as you can see, more than 200 organizations, public organizations, have been certified um, since 208 in the three levels of administration, but uh, many of them um, in the central level. Also, the most widely used quality model by Farm Spain has been the EFQM, um, followed by EVAM, that is a national model and um, for the organizations that are, that are starting with quality, and finally CAP, both in the central level and in other administrations. Here you can see the graphics we have. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, historically in Spain, uh, the public organizations has been, uh, have been using uh, EFQM more than CAF and than Iran. Um, 
also um, um, I'm sorry I can I, I don't know how, uh, why you cannot see the, the the data because I put okay yeah you can okay it's, it's the same uh, you can see the uh, the number of organizations uh, certified. Uh, by us, by models. So you can see that uh, the most of them has been certified by uh, EFQM. And this is in the central administration, and this is in local and regional administration. Well, in the general administrati administration of the state, the model uh, that most, most public organizations have implemented has been EFQM. Uh, but it has been concentrated by, by, by in certain sectors, such as the social security management entities and common services, also in the state public employment service organization, the government delegation and subdelegations, and the defense subdelegations and delegations of the Ministry of Defense. So this configures a geography of quality characterized by numerous islands, peninsulas, and archipelagos of quality, but also with large areas without quality, which it has not been possible to read with the FQM model. Uh, CAF is more established at the local level, uh, more than in the central level or in the regional level. Um, uh, I'm, uh, well, this is uh, the sectors, and this is a graphic with a, a CAF model. And I, I would like to share with you that although EFQM has been, as you may see, the most holistic model used historically in the public sector, we believe that this trend will change uh, due to the complexity of the 2020 version of the EFQM. Since 2020 version of the EFQM was launched, we realized that public organizations were going to have a hard time adapting and might consider moving to CAF. Because the 2020 version, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, uh, is, is very complex, and uh, the 2020 version of CAF maintains the same structure than in the past, uh, the cost of adapting uh, for the public administration uh, to the CAF model is lower. So, for example, this happened uh, already with the different general directorates of the Madrid City Council uh, that uh, in recent years have changed to CAF model. And well, uh, I, finally, I would like to share with you also uh, our last experience with the uh, uh, certifications uh, because in the last call uh, we we have a, a annual call for certificate organizations and in the last call in 2022 um, uh, of the 11 applications received to certify the quality uh, level with EFQM 2020 only four organizations will achieve the requested level uh, leaving seven of them below the self-assessment level uh, using the EFQM 2020. So I think uh, this can, uh, is a, a very good moment to, uh, to think about, uh, to um, think if uh, public administration organizations can uh, choose uh, EFQM model, CAF model, they are uh, friends, but not, not are the same. And, um, as uh, Isun uh, told us, and uh, uh, EFQM model has changed a lot uh, and has incorporated some uh, complex elements like the mega tendencies, like, uh, for example, that is a prospective model that uh, looks into the future. And maybe, I don't know, well, this is the, the discuss we have to have here. And maybe for public organizations, um, it's enough for us to look at the present moment, or I don't know, or maybe some about the future, but it's difficult for them to uh, do a predictive analysis uh, and, um, in, 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 that, in this moment, in the crisis moment, I don't know. 
Okay, Begoña, thank you. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation and for bringing up some uh, challenges uh, for the discussion. So thanks a lot. Um, maybe you can stop sharing now the, yeah. the screen yeah, because yeah. we will move to the, to the next uh, speaker. Um, Bruno Tribioli from Italy. He is the head of digital transition at the Italian Space Agency. And he is today on holidays. So I am very thankful, Bruno, that you are interrupting uh, your holidays to be with us today. So a big thanks and yours is the floor. You are muted, yeah. Thank you, Gracia. Thank you, Gracia. Uh -huh. Let me check it. Um, do you hear me? Yeah. Okay, uh, we are talking about uh, CAF and uh, EFQM. Uh, and this is uh, something that I have experienced both. EFQM in the uh, uh, late 90s, I have to say. So it was the, um, the previous uh, version, not the last one. And at that time, EFQM was uh, exactly the frame that then CAF used. Um, I used EFQM in a private company uh, mm -hmm. and we had uh, some uh, exercises on that. Uh, we have experienced uh, uh, three years with uh, EFQM uh, uh, model. Uh, the main purposes uh, at that time for this private company were to uh, essentially two. That is, the first one was, of course, to improve the organization uh, performance. The second one was to get uh, a, uh, some prize or at least a certification to uh, improve the position in the market. And this, of course, uh, we can understand is not applicable to the uh, public sector. The experience with CAF, uh, I have been through three different cycles. Uh, any cycle uh, last three years, at least at the Italian Space Agency, that is the first year we make uh, the self-assessment with the um, invitation for, from, uh, uh, for any uh, people, any employee to contribute to this uh, self-assessment. Then we use uh, a couple of years to implement the uh, improvement projects that derives from the uh, previous uh, assessment uh, these projects are dedicated to the uh, most important uh, criticalities that has emerged from the self-assessment. Uh, in general, in Italy, uh, the public sector uses, uh, uh, for law, uses uh, the CAF model, uh, while, uh, as far as I know, the private company tends to use uh, uh, the EFQM. Uh, in Italy, the CAF model is used uh, by uh, some hundreds of institutions ranging from uh, research to, um, uh, well, also uh, to tribunals, for example, and uh, a lot of schools uh, and others. Uh, these are distributed along uh, the, the country. Uh, with a majority in the north uh, and central part, but uh, the south part is increasing. And uh, as far as we can, can say, also a lot of research, research center uh, based on the experience from the Italian Space Agency has started is, uh, their journey on the uh, CA, uh, CAF model. Um, the important uh, is according to my personal point of view, is uh, to start with the model, uh, both, uh, let me say, uh, EFQM or CAF. Uh, as far as I know, we prefer CAF from uh, a, the public sector point of view, but it uh, could be useful to, to see in the details of the new EFQM model to understand if we can uh, uh, adjust a bit our path or implement something new. Uh, I can notice that, for example, in the uh, new uh, EFQM model, there is a strong accent on the stakeholder or shareholders. 
And uh, whilst if we, if we look to the CAF model, the, uh, the main part, one of the main part is dedicated to the people inside the, uh, the organization. This could be uh, compared in some way. This is an idea to, to share with you. Thank you, Grazia. Thank you very much, Bruno. Thank you. Um, I think we are already getting some uh, questions in the, in the chat. So I suggest that we continue our discussion following the, the questions and then we can enlarge from that. There is one question to all speakers uh, saying, uh, what are the essential differences between the models under discussion and which model fits which kind of organization based uh, br uh, broadly, oh, best, sorry, broadly speaking? And another question similar is, can you give an example of the practical effect of an organization of using one or the other models? So I think this is very much uh, for the users. Um, of course, we can, we can com complement, but I think Bruno, Begonia, and maybe then Yosunia and, and myself, we can add something. Do you agree? Okay. That's, that's one, one, one question. First of all, I, I would like to say that um, um, it depends uh, on the organization. You cannot um, recommend one model or the other because it depends on a lot of factors. Uh, first of all, the size of the organization, the structure, the um, uh, experience in quality. If the organization has, uh, for example, a citizen chart or not, if they have uh, indicators, if they have uh, some quality tools implemented already or not. Uh, so uh, the, um, the selection, uh, or in, uh, on one or other models depends on a lot of factors and uh, we can not uh, say this one or, or other. Uh, it depends on um, elements, uh, a lot of elements. I, I don't know if, if you agree with me. And uh, it if, uh, depends also um, of, uh, of the director, uh, the support, the support that they have in the, uh, if it's um, a small organization with uh, not autonomy or, or with a whole autonomy in, in finance, in uh, human resources management. So it's difficult to say this one or the other one. Yeah. Uh, if I may interrupt, Begoña, I think yeah. the important thing here is that it's, Anyways, the attitude of wanting to change, improving, it's already the very, I mean, the most important first step. So as we, uh, Gracia said at the beginning, the convincement or the commitment of the leadership, but also the engagement of the people. I think the most important driver here is the desire to improve, to change. And then as Begonia said, I mean, you can evaluate, assess the two models or any other model you have and then see which one, you know, better fits to, to you or which one appeals to you more or, you know, what is the challenge you want to take? I mean, linked to that, I would say, referring to what Begonia presented about, you know, maybe public administrations being a bit scared by the new model, I would put it in a more positive way, saying, are they ready to take the challenge and make public administration flexible, agile or not? I mean, I think any option is valid, you know, how much do you want to challenge yourself or how comfortable, you know, you are in your continuous improvement. Is it, do you want a drastic, a drastic change? Do you want to, you know, be more challenged or not? Or how do you feel more comfortable? And I think that depends a lot on the culture of the organization. But I think any change, any, you know, assessment against any model needs to be really seen as an opportunity and not being, you know, like with the fear to change or, okay, let's, this will be really difficult. No, take your speed, take your path and select, you know, the, the right speed for your organization. Yes, uh, I agree with you totally soon. Thank you very much. And I think that uh, only a point that the moment of uh, the, the, for choose 
one model or, the, or, or any one other. But what is important because of the uh, it, need, it needs a commitment of the leadership, the commitment of the whole personnel of the organization, and um, all of them has to be um, um, with information, with a commitment, and yeah. for all the process. And uh, if uh, you go to CAF or to a, a small model or to EQM, all the organization must be, should be uh, convinced and should uh, have a, a, a strong commitment to go uh, for the start to the end of the process. Yeah, I fully agree. I, I see a lot of uh, very interesting questions in the chat. One is directed to me. Um, well, maybe expressed uh, uh, not exactly my, my thinking. The, I have experience in the private uh, company with EFQM and in the public one with the CAF. Uh, I have to say to be a bit technical that uh, uh, CAF uh, was uh, thought for the public sector. Uh, we talk about citizens. So this is the important difference. Uh, whilst the private company can be used, uh, could be used the, uh, the FQM because of uh, the price, the competition and so on. Maybe you soon can explain a bit on, on that. While in the uh, um, public company or public sector, uh, normally we, we don't run for competition or, or prices. Um, the, the second question also is very interesting. The direct or practical effect uh, on an organization using one of the models. In, uh, during this uh, last month, we have uh, uh, talked a lot about uh, uh, the effect of the crisis on the pri private and public organization. And we have uh, discovered that the organization that have used before the model have exercised their self uh, to be more flexible because the model uh, press you to find solution to your problems. Uh, after you have asked about which problem I have, and then I have to solve them. And if you make this exercise a couple of three years, three uh, times, uh, you are better prepared uh, if a crisis uh, occur, and this this was the case, uh, so I can uh, say this is the most important answer to your question. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, Bruno. Uh, we have other questions in in the chat. There is one: Why not to move from PDCA to radar, quite more powerful? Can we expect soon an update of CAF in order to be more in line with the AFQM 2020 disruptive approach? Can we expect a more demanding qualification of CAF assessors? I think this is a second uh, question. Let's concentrate in the first one. Uh, the potential movement from PDCA to, uh, to the radar uh, approach. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? Begonia, Bruno, Yosune, what do you think? I think Begoña and Bruno are better to answer. <laughs> it's, um, uh, it's true that radar is powerful than PDCA, maybe, but um, we use it uh, one or the other. Um, we don't choose. It's, it's true that the CAF is based in PDCA, but, but uh, we, we can, yeah, you can use also radar, uh, the radar. Uh, to start uh, with the, the improvement cycle. Uh, rather start with results and maybe for the public administration organizations it's difficult to establish the results uh, uh, first of all. And for that, that reason, I think uh, we, we use uh, PDCA uh, PDCA um, instead of rather, but, but a lot of, uh, uh, when I assess an organization, sometimes I go to Rada. Uh, I use some elements of, of uh, from Rada, and I uh, teach Rada in my in the training. So 
it's not a very very important thing I, I, uh, to move uh, or not to move. You can use it, both of them. We we can say that uh, uh, PDCA is uh, something that uh, make the photo of your process where you are in the process of improvement. While if you are using a radar, this means that we are going into detail. Uh, uh, and you are counting where you are for some aspect. So uh, my opinion is that they are quite complementary. Yeah. So uh, in a model like this, you can uh, use both in different situation with some uh, attention. And also in CAF, you, you have uh, some elements of radar in the, um, in the scoring, in the the uh, classic and uh, the other screen, you, you have elements of uh, uh, from radar. So you are a play radar, in fact. OK, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Begonia. Well, in fact, we also have uh, an opinion in the chat answering this from Eva Segretunke from Austria. Hello, Eva. She's saying, in my experience, CAF is suitable for all kinds of organizations uh, as it reflects the given situation of any organization. It also acts as a starter into QM, as well as a constant advisor for very advanced organizations, since it forms the organization and the culture within that organization. Well, historically, as, as you all remember, um, it was also mentioned that the CAF could be like a, a starting point to enter into the quality journey. And then, of course, you can move into um, more detailed um, uh, models to progress uh, in it. It's, it's an open discussion, of course. We have more questions in the, in the chat. Um, do you have to be EFQM certified to participate in EFQM Global Awards? Or can you apply with any of the existing quality management systems? That's quite a specific question, and I will be happy to contact this person later and give more information. But just to answer it shortly, you you must prove that your qual I mean your management system, your I mean your your performance is quite mature. Okay, you can be a national award winner with similar models or you know equivalent to EFKM, but you need to be pre-qualified to enter the EFKM Global Award. But that. I mean, requires a longer conversation probably, but yeah, you, I mean, you must have, I mean, some certain maturity level, but of course, if you have been CAF user, you won't be so misaligned to the EFQN model. I mean, okay, now the model is new, but the principles, the, I mean, the, the cause and relationship, the continuous improvement, if you have your process in, in place, I mean, you, you would, I mean, you would, of course, have certain maturity too, but it's something that we will need to discuss on a one-to-one. -one. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Yosune. There is also a comment from our colleague, uh, Michael Burnett. Post-crisis OECD have highlighted the need for the public sector to be capable in strategic foresight and crisis management, as well as current operations, uh, fully uh, in agreement. In fact, the revision of the CAF 2020, although uh, having been done before the pandemic, it already foresees the, the methodologies, the criteria, sub-criteria to work within the organization in, in foresight methodologies. So uh, again, the model is very flexible. You can uh, go as far as you want uh, with it. So these uh, methodologies, innovative methodologies are also uh, included in, in yes, the model. Yes, that works for it also. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, because yeah, that's something that I, I didn't want to interrupt when Begonia was explaining what, what you said about the mega trends and everything. I mean, I don't think we can ignore the fact that we need to, I mean, really analyze the mega trends. Maybe the EFK model is making it more prominent, you know, more visible, but I don't think you can ignore them. I don't think public administration cannot do future forecasts when you talk about, you know, evolution of uh, born, I mean, born rates, evolution of, you know, I mean, some statistics that you already know and you can probably easily, pre I mean, predict. So maybe the impression, I don't know, eh, the public administration have is that the model is like only three, four things about that, but no, I mean, the model is the usual model. Plus we are now, of course, adding, 
elements that we consider cannot be ignored if you, you know, want to be sustainable. And I think public administration should be, I mean, a good example, role model of, you know, efficiency and, you know, using best the resources and, you know, trying to, to adapt to the future. So I think, yeah, I mean, CAF, if integrated is, I mean, I think it's a must, you know, especially for, for the future years. Yes. Uh, just to underline that uh, the, the model is quite uh, flexible because I have experienced uh, very small uh, institution like a primary school uh, with 20 people and a large uh, institution around 3,000 uh, employees. Uh, so I, I can say that if, um, really it is uh, very, very uh, flexible. You can uh, use as it is you don't have to customize because it requires a lot of time. And you can start uh, step by step, first exercise, then second one and so on. And it will be easier and easier to, to act on, on it. Yeah, I think, Bruno, you are completely right. I think both CAF and EFKM, the most important thing is that they are flexible and adaptable. So in the end, it's the organization the, I mean, no matter which one they choose, CAF, EFKM, but you need to do your own interpretation of the model, what it means to your own words, and then, you know, try to apply it. If you are a small organization, you won't go point by point, you know, of course, we don't expect maybe, you know, small organizations to have everything in place, but I think it's the... They use the adoption you do of whatever model you, you choose, but you need to make it your own, you know, and, and adapt it to that. And I don't know, I guess CAF is similar, but on EFKM, we don't, we don't want to be prescriptive who your customer should be, who your stakeholder should be. It's a reflection, I mean, reflection each organization should do. What are your key, you know, stakeholders? And then how do you serve them? But I guess both models have a strong focus on stakeholders and, I mean, how you will better serve them, no matter if it's CAF or EFKM, but, you know, they are one of the most important, you know, things for an organization. Yes, but it's a bit more demanding EFKM with some elements. I, I, I have to mm, say that. It's more uh, flexible, CAF, I think, for the public administration because uh, you, you must um, go very much, uh, uh, look very much into the future and have very, a lot of uh, um, uh, predictable uh, data. Well, and I, I don't know, but okay, it's, it's, uh, you can use uh, both, but it's mm, a bit more demanding, I think, for that element. Uh, yeah, now. The there is a question about costs. Uh... Uh, yeah. for CAF and the FQM. Uh, yeah. Of course, in the, in the public sector, as, as I said, it, at least in Italy, we use CAF, so there is no, no, no problem. In any case, if we would use uh, uh, EFQM, the, the budget is uh, up to the organization itself. It's not the central uh, uh, well uh, budget covering these expenses. Yeah, in, indeed, the, the cost is uh, free, uh, frequently uh, an issue as well, but it's also, again, as we said, depends, varies very much from country to country. And also, the, I think the decision goes very much with the law, the legal requirements, the culture, the tradition in the country. There is a question in the chat about why, after 20 years, there is not so much movement from the use of the CAF model into the EFQM model in those organizations that started with, uh, with CAF. Do you have an opinion on that? Uh, sorry. Uh, Is this one taking into account that the models are already 20 years old and that continuous improvement has always been the main objective? Do you have any opinion as why so few organizations have advanced from CAF into EFQM? Well, well the first uh, immediate answer is that uh, the uh, previous uh, um, EFQM version was exactly, or at least uh, uh, very, very similar to the CAF that was derived from the EFQM. The new version is uh, maybe quite young, maybe, and uh, it will require some time Maybe. Uh, the second uh, answer is that when you have uh, run a cycle with the model, it's very, very expensive uh, and time consuming to move to another model. 
just to align the vocabulary and to convince people and so on. So it's not so easy. Yeah, on that note, what I could say is that, as Bruno said, in the 90s, I think it was clear, like EFCM is for, I mean, it's, it's not clear, but you know, it was maybe more seen for private organizations, for public. I think it also depends where you are. And if you haven't used the CAF, then maybe you are fresh. I mean, you have a fresh start. You are not, you know, like coming from an old tradition. And this, for example, we can see it like in the Middle East, for example, or in other uh, European countries where maybe CAF is not so used. They are embracing EFCM and many, many public administrations are using it. But of course, once you are used to one model, um, Bruno, you are right. The, I mean, the EFCM and the CAF were the same. I mean, the same, very similar until 2019. Once you are used to one, maybe the transition takes longer. And of course, with the COVID and all the changes, we also noticed in our model users that it took them, you know, maybe a couple of years to make the decision to transform because they were in the middle of a crisis. So I think it depends a lot where you are coming from, what you are used to, how, as I said, your culture is, how much you want to, you know, like change or how much need you also have or you feel. And then also if you have any reference previously or not, or if you are fresh to, to the model. So I think, yeah, there are, as Begoña said, there are different factors. You know? No, 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 uh, only that. Uh, also, uh, maybe it's not necessary to move uh, from one model to another uh, because uh, you have enough with the uh, CAF. Uh, with CAF, uh, we have some um, uh, tool that is uh, the improvement plan that, that is crucial in the model. And uh, if you are following the, your improvement plan, it's um, easier for the organization uh, continue with the same model because you have your structure and the criteria, you know, all, all the, me the methodology and uh, you don't need to go to maybe to another model because a uh, cut works or uh, yeah, yeah, what I meant was your, your organization. No, no, what I meant about the transition was from our EFK mm. model users to the new one. I mean, of mm. course, CAF users can decide to stay with the same or take, but I was referring to the, you know, to the EFK model user ones. Well, in, in Spain, in the past, a, a CAF users uh, used to go to EFQM, but uh, now I don't mm, I think it's necessary uh, to move. Sorry. Okay, um, thank you very much. I think we, unfortunately, we have... Uh, uh, finish our available time for this conversation. I think we could all continue and continue. Uh, the idea of the debate is, is, is just to present two different models, the differences, um, the reasons perhaps to select one or the other, the transitions from one to the other, etc. the perspectives from the users. I think we have got uh, quite some insights. Of course, again, it varies a lot from country to country. Begonia was presenting the numbers in Spain. Uh, Mimi from Bulgaria was pointing out that in Bulgaria is only CAF for now. So it also changes a lot. I know EFQM is working a lot in the Arab countries right now, completely different culture, completely different type of administration. So for us, as the European CAF Resource Center, we can only say thank you for your participation, to all the participants for their very fruitful contributions via the chat. Just to let you know that uh, we are here, the CAF family, as we like to call ourselves, we are building up a strong network and these and many other topics should be in our discussions because the overall aim of all of us is to improve our organizations and to better serve our citizens. So thanks so much to everybody and hopefully see you soon around. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye from Spain. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.